All right, so I'm going to go over a shot that I did with uh, Yuli here in San Antonio, Texas. Um, we did this actually. I set up a backdrop out at a park. Um, it was in one of those, you know, covered pavilions um, at a park uh, nearby, and uh, I did this because, you know, I do a lot of collabs, and so there's no money involved, and it gets quite expensive if you're renting studio time. The average uh, cost of a studio here is $50 an hour minimum two hours so um, I don't know about you guys but I can't afford a hundred bucks a pop every time I go and do collab if there's no revenue to be made um, it turns out to be a uh, not a cost benefit for me so um, you know you got to use alternatives and a lot of people do this we just go shoot wherever we can you know in your garage or whatever um, in, in this case I just set up in a pavilion put up a backdrop and uh, we went for it um, so some problems <laughs> when you it was a small area that we shot in so some problems that you know the one of the benefits of shooting in a studio is your lighting's already there a lot of times it's already your stands and everything you don't have to carry a bunch of junk out um, and you don't have to worry about sunlight coming in and over here right here you can see that uh, sunlight was coming in and I had actually had a stand back over here and it was coming in and it cast a shadow on here um, I, I could have completely crushed the ambient, I guess, and uh, tried to get rid of that in camera, but uh, I didn't, honestly, I didn't, it was over here on the side, and I, I didn't even notice it, so that's one thing. Another thing, I like to light my backdrops, um, and at the time, I was using uh, just this little tripod, and, you know, so that's, I could leave it, you know, but it's kind of a, it sticks out. Since then, I've gotten a little little bitty stand that I can use for these backlights. But ideally, you'd want to have uh, like a C-stand with a bar going across. You know, the C-stand would be vertically over here, and you'd have a boom over here, and you'd have a light uh, maybe sh back here shining on the background off camera um, to avoid, you know, getting these things in your shot. And then over here, you know, again, since we were... Uh, tied on space I've got a piece of a stand here it's just kind of a and I couldn't get back very far to compress the background with a longer focal length it's just you know <laughs> it's a trade-off yes if I were in a studio I could avoid all of this but I wasn't and this is uh, how it ended up being so I'm just gonna see I really like this shot um, I like her expression she looks happy um, I like what she's wearing. I, I like there's a little bit of movement in the hair, you know. I like everything about this. She's there's movement in the legs right here. Let me just see if I can, you know, I could just leave it like this. Maybe take the stand out. It'd, it'd be fine. But let's see what else I can do with it here, um, just for fun. So the first thing you know I noticed was this right here, and uh, that's very distracting. Um, another thing, you know, I'd want to fix these edges. So. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to hit Control J to duplicate the, the base layer. And I'm going to do some content aware fill and just see uh, if I can get rid of some of these spots. So you got to have your selection first before you hit that content aware fill. So define your selection right here. And I'm terrible at selecting, but. So now this won't be grayed out anymore because I actually have a selection for it to operate on. Okay, so over here is the preview area. And I, what I'm going to do is select the area over here that I want to fill in this little spot with pixels sampled from this area here. And then it's going to think about it. You can see it down here. It's spinning. And eventually it's going to calculate what it thinks this should look like, uh, like over here based on the pixels that I selected and it looks perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And we'll wait for it. There you go. So now we'll go ahead and I'll, I'll try and get this. This is kind of going to be kind of a pain. I mean there's a couple things going on here. I've got light spill from the sun actually coming in here. 
um, that's you know it's causing an inconsistency in the lighting so I mean I'm gonna try the best I can here to just see what I can do really the goal here is to try and make this not as much of a, a sore thumb you know I kinda messed up that selection there sticking out like a sore thumb is what I meant to say let me flatten this down I don't need those layers anymore because I know this is fine so I'm going to do edit content aware fill again I'm just going to do this on the background layer it's either going to work or it's not is my theory behind that I'm going to select areas that I want it to sample from this is going to be weird I don't know how well this is going to work we'll see and look over here I may end up doing some clone stamping some patching just to fix that little area yeah it's not bad I'll, I'll have to I'm looking at the preview over here. I'll have to kind of fix some things down here and right here, but you know, there is some uneven evenness in the lighting. And you know, I can kind of do some things to tone that down. Still thinking about it. And you guys can laugh at me for my, uh, you know, my lo fi, cheap studio set up in the park all you want um, we still got some great shots and it was free so you can't beat free it's better than shelling out a hundred bucks so that's a little bit problematic right there um, you know in here this is going to take some time I'm probably going to actually go to the clone stamp tool I'm just going to flatten this down again and I'm going to create a new blank layer I'm going to use my clone stamp I'm going to set my flow to 100 and using my left and right brackets to resize this and alter option key to make my selection that I'm sampling and then I'm going to actually let me make a selection here because I, I kind of like the bottom of the, uh, the canvas the wooden dowel it's pretty cool so I'm gonna leave that there I'm not gonna take it out so I'm using the uh, the magnetic lasso tool I'll go back to the clone stamp tool sample my area I grab a spot right there and I'll come down here now nah, it's not working control Z undo getting too much of her pants in there and I'm just clicking and painting till I get it the way I want it And you got to be careful when you run up to the selection lines because it's going to leave a line. Uh, probably, let me deselect and see if that's what I did. It left maybe a little bit of a line, or that might have been from the shadow. Yeah, it's all right. Let me zoom in. Got a little artifact right here. Let me try to freehand it. Yeah, I'll use the. I, I I'm horrible. Yeah, see, it left right here a little area, so. Do this. Let's go around her boot. Yeah, I'm horrible at freehanding, so got to use the magnetic lasso. Let's tell you what. Let's just work on all of this. Whoops. So bad at freehanding it that can't even use the magnetic lasso sometimes. All right. So why I'm doing this is I'm just creating a boundary so that when I'm doing this clone stamp it doesn't bleed into the chair or the boot 
then I'm just focusing on this area. And if I can, I'm going to try to avoid touching these outer lines because it'll create, you can see that I left a, uh, an artifact there is what I like to call it, that I don't want. So this is, let me start with the easy stuff. Now let's just see if I can. get that out of there. Sometimes it bleeds into the selection. The sample area bleeds into the area that you don't want it to and it creates ghosting. You gotta watch for that. I did a lot of ghosting. It might even be easier to... I'm just undoing right now. Move back over here and grab that selection there. kind of lining it up here. There we go, that's better. And you can see the little plus signal over here uh, to the right. The little plus is showing you where it's grabbing the sample from, so it's kind of a kind of a guide. Right, so what I've done, let me deselect the area. Cool, so I still kind of have an area in there. We're just going to have to blend it in later. And there's a spot right there. There's a spot right here. Turn it off. That's what it looked like before, and I was able to take that all out. Go back to my clone stamp, and we will grab this spot right here. I'm going to try not to brush into the boot and then I'm going to go right here get that and then I'm going to sample that right there and you can kind of see preview before you start brushing in the clone what it's going to look like so cleaned up all that area there you know I might what I can do is if I kind of want to blend it a little more do like a flow of like 50 kind of come up here and sample this and just kind of hit that there so it's I uh, got the boot in so I'm just trying to blend this stuff a little bit so it's not as harsh of a line and you can see I kind of messed it up there because I got the boot in there. Kind of looks like the shadow. I'll leave it there for now. If it's bothering me later I'll take it out. So I'm going to come down here now and I'm going to start taking this out. And you know you get there's a little bit of a shadow here from that leg but kind of comes down here. We'll see if we can kind of take it out a little bit. Perfect. I'm going to grab a sample from there. This is tedious, man. You know, I mean, if, if you can, you know, avoid, uh, uh, afford Studio time is no argument. It's the way to go. Um, but it's fun sometimes just going out here and to a park or whatever and just shooting for free. It's a nice day outside. You get a breeze. You're not stuck inside the studio. You get the best of both worlds. It's just if you don't have a ton of room or the wind is blowing too hard. <laughs> That's another thing. Uh, trying to use backdrops in a park on a windy day just don't even do it just don't even go there it's just it's a nightmare waiting to happen all right so that looks pretty good I'm gonna come in here and let's just magnetic lasso tool it's not gonna get that lace 
want we'll to come back and finesse that later. Like even with the magnetic lasso tool, I'm terrible at selecting. There we go. Um, trying to decide whether I want to use the clone stamp tool, the... Yeah, let me use the clone stamp tool or the content aware. I mean, I could try the content aware. I'm going to go back to the clone tool, clone stamp tool for starters. This, let's just see how much we can... No, that's not going to hold. Let's see. Oh, it was a 50% opacity. I'm going to bring that back up to 100. Right, and then I'm constantly getting ghosting and stuff. Let's see. That looks pretty good. It gets a little tedious. Sometimes you just got to... Yeah, that's not working. A little bit of a smaller sampling area. Sometimes you just got to use small strokes. And just start painting it in, see what you can get. So I'm just painting in, I'm sampling over here and I'm painting in over here. And looks a little weird, but if I zoom out it just looks like a shadow so then I'm going to come here and again I'm just getting the basic distractions and things that don't belong here I'm just getting them out and then I can kind of finesse these things later like there's a little weirdism going on right down here, right? Not sure what I'm going to do there. Haven't thought that far ahead yet. I would be a terrible chess player. So the selection wasn't perfect, so I'm probably messing up the chair a little bit. Come up here. Yeah, I messed it up a little bit. Let me see if I can fix it. There you go. No big deal. You know, later I'm going to tone the background a little bit, brighten it up to match um, her top here. And I'll do some things maybe to kind of help blend this stuff in a little bit so that's probably this is going to be that's the hardest part it's right there I'll probably let me go in and grab this I don't even know if the uh, I'm just going to come in and freehand it why I would even try that I don't know but maybe I can do it Oops, kind of messed it up there, but it's all right. It's pretty darn good for me. All right, I'm going to flatten it down again, and I'm going to do Edit Content Aware Fill. I kind of decide which one I'm going to use as I go. It's either Content Aware Fill. I could try the Patch Tool, but let me try Content Aware. And if you look over here, 
Hmm. Not the greatest job I've ever seen. <laughs> All right, so obvious edit there. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna grab that spot right there. So the content of Warfield kind of did some of the heavy lifting for me and then I'm just gonna Oops, fill in some of this stuff. Let me just come here, grab that. I'm just sampling from areas and yeah, I'm doing the best I can. There we go. Now let me sample from right here. And boom. That's that part's gone. Very cool. So last thing I'm gonna do as far as the cleanup is I'll do a content or fill down here. Whoops, kinda messed that up. It's alright. Flatten it down again. Content or fill. Let me see what happens here. I'm going to define my selection area. I'm going to look over here, see what it does. Not bad, not bad. It's leaving a little spot there that it didn't quite figure out completely but this looks kind of weird in here as I'm waiting for that to fill in I'm just looking at stuff that does look a little weird in there but looks like it's part of the shadow I think we'll be able to do something with it okay let me come back to my clone stamp tool And I'm going to grab this right here. And I'm going to fill that in. The reaction is a little slower, I think, because I'm recording video at the same time that I'm running, you know, Lightroom and Photoshop at the same time pretty good so there's a little spot right here okay this is new I don't want to see more news I don't even want to see the news that you're showing me there we go Okay, constant interruptions. Now my phone alarm is going off. All right, let's just see what that looks like. And there's one more. I'm going to hit Control minus. There's one more spot up here. And I'll just clone stamp that out as well. And boom. It's pretty much cleaned up. I mean, all the distractions are gone. It's a little wonky right down here. <laughs> Let me just see what I can do there if anything mm. so what I may do is make a uh, I'll go in later I'm going to zoom in real tight I don't like the way that's looking and make a selection and fill it in probably do like a uh, polygon lasso tool we'll zoom in here and 
And really all I want to do is I, I'm actually, let me do it the other way from the other direction. Just want to grab this kind of area right here. Along the line of the chair. Just want to make it look a little more consistent. Just like that. And hopefully I didn't leave a line up there. Uh, I think it looks alright. Let me It's okay, it looks a little um, like I need to, like it's fatter on one side than the other. I'll come back to that later. But, okay, it's all cleaned up now. So, so far, um, it's looking pretty good. Alright, so the next thing that I would probably work on, I'm going to flatten this down again. You know, you can... Um, flatten image down to the background I mean you could keep all your layers if you want to there's nothing about those layers that I would want to keep unless I wanted to you know go back and show you the original shot which uh, you know you can see right there go back in Lightroom I saved it so so there's the before and there's the after pretty good cleanup like I said, I mean, if you're a purist, you don't really like this light spill on the background. Uh, the shadows don't necessarily bother me that much. There's a little bit of something right here that I might come back and fix later. Actually, maybe this. Just kind of smooth this out and make it look like there's maybe a little edit there. But that's the only thing I would really maybe come back and fix. And I am going to tone the background, probably darken it a little bit, uh, make the colors a little richer. So I'm going to come back into Photoshop. Um, I really like the the lighting the way it is. I had lit this. Um, there's a little bit of you know rim here. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I shot this. It was back in December, but I had a uh, small strip box uh, pointed over here, and then I had a going almost straight on like a beauty disc configuration I had a like a 20 inch glow softbox and I think I actually did have the the uh, beauty dish attachment in it um, but so the lighting came out real nice and actually we got a lot of coverage here uh, with the, the strip box and then over here I had the other light coming in almost straight on maybe a little off to the edge on this side so uh, I'm gonna hit a control J so if I'm going to do any liquefying, I don't usually do that, um, but I'm going to do a little bit here because um, like right here where her leg is smashed up against the chair, it's popping her leg out right there and it doesn't look natural. She's a, th she's a thin person, <laughs> so she doesn't have uh, big legs or thick legs or anything like that, so this, doesn't, this is not representative of her, and so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can kind of nudge this in a little bit just because it is exaggerated kind of got the uh, sleeve a little bit probably need to make this a little bit smaller So I like that better. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. There's zoom in just a little bit more. So this looks a little unnatural. We'll smooth that out there. And bring this out just a little bit. Just so it doesn't look like ripply, you know what I mean? You want it to look, you don't want it to look like you liquefied it. That looks pretty smooth right there. 
And, you know, I, I could do this a little bit right here. Let me try and just see if I can get this without. And again, this is just where her leg is smashed up against the chair. And it's just exaggerating the width of the leg in one spot. And it just looks kind of weird to me. over here and do this just a little bit more because I just don't like the way the leg is popping out. You really got to finesse this when you're moving things around. You got to make sure you're not doing anything weird to the nearby parts. So one other spot I want to bring in is kind of right here. Okay. Hit okay. My um, inclination is to do a little bit more, maybe right here, but I'm going to leave it. It's better. You don't want to do too much, you know. So that's pretty good. So this is where I start saving my layers. So I'm gonna call that one liquify. The other thing that just that I'm noticing right off that I might want to correct is some of this hair that's sticking up here. Um, I'm not the one of those that I just got to make it perfect. I don't mind fl some flyaways and stuff like that. I think it looks natural, especially when there's like a... Here we were outside and there was actually a little bit of wind blowing in her hair. And it's just perfect. You know, in the studio, you might have a fan or something like that. So the only thing I don't mind, I might get some of this maybe right here. Maybe some of this on the shoulder. This is really what's kind of bothering me right there is just that right there. So easiest way to do that is to do a select subject with your quick selection tool over here Okay, that took forever. So what I'm going to do, so it's selected the subject here. And what I want to do is I want to right click on the selection and choose select inverse. So now it has everything but her selected. And that's going to allow me to come in with a clone stamp tool and kind of brush through this. Clone stamp the hairs out without... Uh, getting into the body of her hair here and so to do that i'll come in a little bit closer it's going to help me kind of clean up some of that too so let me just come in a little tighter and i'm going to do this actually on a new layer we'll call it hair cleanup and then we'll do another layer where we do the skin as well the blends okay So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to sample right here. And I'm just going to come down. Looks pretty good. Sample again. Come here. Looks pretty good. We'll sample here. Here's where you kind of got to be a little bit careful with it. And again, I mean, you don't need to have it absolutely perfect you know because it won't look natural if you have I'm gonna make my selection a little smaller here yep there we go perfect you know so I don't mind some hair coming out this is looking a little messy down here though Zoom out a little bit with the control minus. I absolutely could leave, just leave this the way it is. It's really a matter of preference. So 
I'm just going to come up here and just the fact that I have the area selected outside of her means that I can't basically it's like coloring I'm not going to color inside the lines here I'm just coloring outside the lines right let me grab this right here come over here on this side whoops control Z to undo it and you kind of screw it up I'm gonna come over here and I almost don't know if I need to get that or not it's really all of this is you know it's very subjective it's not working This does. All right, yeah, there we go. It's better. Just grab this spot right here. All right. Control zero to center the canvas. I'm going to deselect. And as you can see, there's with the hair, there's without it. I've done a little bit of cleanup. Looks pretty good. I might fix some of this right here. You know, you want to look for spots, especially on your canvas that look too, uh, you know, repeated. You don't want an obvious edit to show up. I don't, don't like that. You don't want the, the edit to be, you know, obvious. So that looks pretty good. So hair cleanup. I'm going to do another blank layer. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to get some of the blems. Okay. We'll use the spot healing brush tool. it yeah looks good and we'll come back a little bit later you know there's some inconsistencies and there's some darker and lighter areas there uh, that we can definitely fix with the dodge and burn which we'll come back a little bit later and do And there's a little piece of hair here. I don't mind the hair in the face so much. I'm not going to go through and get all these little hairs. I mean, her hair is blowing. That's just the way it is. It would be a nightmare trying to get all of these. I could. And some people would. I just... You know, I'd like to get on with this edit and get on with my life. So, I'm going to leave the hair. Okay, just do a quick look at the rest of her skin. All looks good. Control zero. Alright, so there's the blems. Not many at all. She has really nice skin. Overall. Okay, now I could uh, just, you know, leave this the way it is. But I think... Before I go to the dodge and burn, I'm going to do the uh, the texture, not the texture on the background, but I'm going to uh, select the subject and I'm going to saturate this background and brighten the reds. Um, we'll do that with a curves layer. So if you're trying to do a select subject and you do it right now, it's going to think about it and it's not going to work. It's not going to be able to find the subject. It's going to might find something in here as far as like the blems. Yeah, because that's what I was working on because there's no pixels in here. Um, you got to do a select subject on a layer that actually has all the pixels in it, right? Like these down here. So I'll just select the background and I'll do a select subject again and it should be able to find her this time. 
to one of those Photoshop gotchas, and it makes sense if you think about it. So we'll let it find the subject. Okay, very good. I'm going to do a select inverse. And actually, we need to go to the liquify layer because look what it did. Um, it's selecting the original before the liquify. So let me do go to the liquify layer and do a select subject. All right, we'll let it think about it. Yeah, that's better. Perfect. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to select inverse like we did before. I'm going to come up here and move to the top here so I can create a new layer at the top. And I'm going to do a curves layer. And you can see what it did was it automatically created a mask for me. So it masked out the subject for me. So any of the uh, edits that I do on this layer, it's only going to do it to the background. So, for example, if I wanted to come up here and I wanted to look at the reds and play around with those see that I can do that look at that now I'd probably want to uh, remove it you know from down here and I probably want to take out some of the blues because it's looking a little purpley there you go much better such a cool effect being able to do that you know curves you generally think of lightning and darkening uh, in the RGB layer which is the white one here and if I come in here you know I can definitely add some mood and kind of darken it a little bit which looks real cool right and you can actually mess around with the midtones too. So I'm kind of losing some of that. But right there, man, when you bump up the midtones, look at that. It's crazy. So probably what I want to do though is I want to mask out this bottom part. I mean, I don't have to, but uh, you know, the red, the, the saturation of the red is increasing as we move up here because the light was behind her and it was shining on the background that was a little gelled speed light that I had on the background so it was actually a three light setup I had a light on the background I had a strip light pointing over here and then I had the key light uh, in front of her with the softbox so what I can do uh, is use black a mask as you can see it's either white or black uh, white has the effect on black turns the effect off so if I paint with black and you want to look at your flow we'll leave it at like 30 if I paint with black it's going to remove the the effect that I just added see it so at about 30 percent that looks pretty good I may do another swipe just like that oh, let me undo that last swipe I think I liked it with just one swipe I mean, I'm pretty happy with that right there. I could almost leave that just where it is. Uh, I'm going to save that. And you can see, I mean, it's more saturated all over here and less saturated here because I had the sunlight coming in over here. So um, I don't know that with the composition overall, I mean, if you have a photographer's eye, I guess you would come in and go, oh, what happened there? What did you do? You know, what happened here with the lighting on your background? <laughs> you know, you kind of dropped the ball there, didn't you? Um, yeah, maybe. I dropped the ball to begin with when I, you know, uh, let all that sunlight come in and create shadows on the thing and probably dropped the ball when I got the light stand in over here. And then I probably dropped the ball again when you could see the stand behind her that created the light. So yeah, we could we could say I dropped the ball. All right. I'm still waiting for it to save. but So I'm going to just collapse these. I'm going to hit Control G to group them together. And I'm just going to call these edits so that's it
I, I can't think of anything else uh, that I would do to this shot. Let's see what the, um, is it cropped yet for Instagram? It's not. All right, so here's the thing that annoys me. Uh, why Instagram can't just let us post our shots the way they are with the composition the way it was out of the camera we gotta crop it to four by five but whatever so a little trick I'm using the crop tool and you can see I, I, I really like the composition as it was I like the amount of space at the top and the bottom was just perfect I liked it the way it was, but for Instagram, I got to do a four by five. I really don't want to cut into it and crop it down at all, so I'm going to expand it. So the four by five, that what that means is I've got these sides over here. Real easy. All you got to do is grab your uh, rectangular marquee tool, select inward. As far as you can, but not touching the subject and then right click choose free transform and then choose distort and then you grab this handle and you pull everything to the edge and then you hit enter okay and then you can do the same thing to the other side select inward don't touch the subject as far as you can if you touch the subject, what will happen is it'll, all it's doing is it's dragging to the, it's going to drag the subject and distort them. It's going to look really funny. So right click, choose free transform. And then right click, choose distort. Now if you start pulling too much, you're going to notice it's going to look funny. Because you can see that it's stretching it. Right. But I think this looks okay. It, 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 since I know that I stretched it, I can kind of see it a little bit here, but I don't think anybody's really going to notice it. So I like this. You know, this is maybe a little bright behind her, but um, overall I like it. The red pops with her top. Um, it just pops in the whole picture. If I wanted to, I could get rid of this dowel down here and the cement on the floor, but I like it. I think it's cool. So I'm going to leave it. All right. I know this was a long tutorial, but um, it's tedious work uh, when you got to clean up like that. It takes a little time to get it just right. So I appreciate if you're still listening. I appreciate you hanging in there and, and watching, and I hope you did learn something. And uh, let me know if you'd like to see more tutorials like this. Thanks.